that are great about the R65 are things that are just great about airheads to begin with. I mean, it's the reason these bikes are so beloved by so many, so many people. They're easy to work on, they're all mechanical. I mean, you know that of all the things that could ever go wrong with them, the issue is never going to be that you have to take it to a dealer to get a man with a special computer to explain what went wrong to you. They're this kind of earthy machine that's a, a throwback to a kind of romanticized, simple time. And yeah, of course, that simpler time is, is that. It's romanticized. It's, it's not always the case. It's not always sunshine and butterflies. Sure, things are going to break. These are machines that have prowled this earth for four, five, six decades. Things go wrong. Seals are going to leak. Parts are going to wear out. Things will eventually fall apart. But what you always know is that you can sit at home, you can crack open a can of beer, and you can sit down with a manual and a set of tools and fix it yourself and get it back on the road. And yeah, once it's there, back on the road, where it belongs and where it spends most of its time, let's be real, it's a joy. I mean, is the R65 the fastest thing? No, of course not. It weighs 450 pounds and it put out 44 horsepower when it first rolled off the factory floor in West Germany in 1980. And certainly some of those horses have probably gone to pasture between then and now. But still, it's, it's sublime. It has that smoothness of the classic flat twin and it makes such a delightful honey sweet sound once you're, you're above 5,000 RPM or so. I mean, yeah, are there bigger airheads? Yes. So when BMW launched this bike back in 1978, it was offered as a kind of mid-size bike, a new generation, so declared the ads, proof that bigger is not always better. And still, the R65 was the runt of the litter. But who cares? It's nimble, it's fun, with an ever so slightly smaller wheelbase than some of the other airheads, and an 18-inch front wheel, and slightly shorter front forks. It's such a joy to just go carving through corners on, even with its antique suspension that may make you feel a little unsafe. I mean, at its core, it is a livable, day-to-day -day machine. It's this weird icon of German manufacturing from a time in this sort of shrouded past from a country that no longer even exists. It is simultaneously incredibly out of its element in the modern day. It has carburetors and points, for God's sake. But at the same time, it has the exact same characteristics that everybody loves about modern motorcycles. They get you from point A to point B with the maximum amount of joy in between. And that's what's great about the R65. It will get you from A to B with smiles the whole way. I mean, is it perfect? No, of course not. But is it always going to be a charming little machine for whoever's sitting in the saddle? No question.